Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 28, beginning at verse 1. Glory to Christ our Saviour. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not there, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! I greet you on this wonderful Easter morning. Now, I'm not sure if any of you have ever experienced an earthquake. I have only ever experienced a tremor, and that felt pretty scary. I found records of the most deadliest earthquake in recent years. In April of 2015, an earthquake hit Nepal um, at a magnitude of 7.8 on the Richter scale. Many died from an avalanche on Mount Everest. Deaths were also recorded in India, Tibet and Bangladesh. The United Nations estimated more than 8 million people had died. On May 2015, less than a month later, Nepal was struck again by another 7.3 magnitude earthquake, killing many, many more. The first earthquake um, to be ever recorded was in May um, 19th of 526 AD in Antioch. Turkey killing 250,000 and the most devastating on record was in Syria in May in 1202 killing 1.1 million people. So earthquakes are not quite what they would call a welcoming event. However, it is hard to dismiss our very current context and of the impact and effect of the coronavirus which may possibly be overriding any earthquake that has to take place. The common factors are death, fear, pain and suffering of all sorts. Our gospel reading this morning, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. Did you feel it? Can you feel it? The events of this very significant time in our Christian calendar, in fact, had consisted of two earthquakes. They were not only as dramatic, but they were life-changing. And I would still like to believe that it is still life-changing today. Matthew's Gospel gives us two accounts of earthquakes, and they were three days apart. The first was at Jesus' last breath on the cross. If we go back to Matthew 27, verses 51 to 54, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. 
Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, Mm -hmm. they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. So there's the evidence of the first earthquake. It says the earth shook, rocks split, tombs were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. This is the first earthquake when Jesus was crucified. It clearly says the centurion who were with him that day, who were keeping watch over him, they saw the earthquake. And of course, they uttered the words, Truly, this was the Son of God. They became first-hand witnesses. They were filled with awe as much as they were filled with fear. The second earthquake is in our gospel reading today, which occurred just three days later. It happened as the women, Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary were on the way to the tomb. They had felt the earthquake at his death. And now, and suddenly, there was a great earthquake. They felt the earthquake as they approached the tomb. Two great earthquakes marked the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. It seems God is announcing the great and awesome thing that his son Jesus Christ Um, has done by shaking the earth, first in his great wrath and then in his great joy. Now, for many of us visiting a graveside and cleaning it and placing flowers, it provides some sort of grief, uh, uh, some sort of closure and connects you to your loved ones. It brings some sort of comfort between the grief of the loss Uh, and the grief of of non-existence. This sudden earthquake seems to be caused by an angel of the Lord who had come down just to roll away the stone. (laughs) And so you would ask, why would God send an angel to roll away the stone? And then we would say, to let Jesus out, of course. Actually, no. (laughs) It was so that the women were able to see inside the tomb. This ridiculous stone that the chief priests put um, in in, in front of the tomb and blocked the tomb off, thought it had ended all their fears. But in fact, it was only blocking the women to, to view inside the tomb, to view Jesus. The angel made sure that the women could see in and see that their Lord had been raised from the dead. Jesus was no longer dead and lying in his tomb. Jesus, in fact, left the tomb the same way that he would later in the day enter the locked room where his disciples were hiding out in fear from the Jews. Jesus' body resurrected and glorified and was no longer bound to any spikes or nails or stones or walls. Absolutely no constraints. Nothing was holding Jesus down, and hence, he is the risen Christ. Truth is, there is nothing that Jesus cannot pass through in order to get to you. Stubbornness, no problem. Deep-seated resentment, no problem. Anger, fear, anything that you may be experiencing or going through right now is not beyond anything that God can do for you. Nothing stops God from getting to you or through you. Are we too preoccupied with earthly things? He will not be stopped. Is this not perhaps what we are experiencing in this lockdown? The acknowledgement of not only God's existence, but also his presence here and now. You have a a rock-hard heart, as thick as Joseph's tomb. Jesus did it once and he will do it again. God will shake the earth if he has to. All these things can be no more, um, all these things can no more keep Jesus Christ from getting at you 
than the silly rock could keep him locked up inside a tomb. God's angels are always ready at a moment's notice to come down and roll away the stone or rocks that is blocking your heart and your life, your stubbornness, your resentment, your preoccupation with earthly things, anger, fear, anything. God will get to every rock hard heart so that you may know his love for you, his forgiveness for all your sins, his peace for you, his righteousness for you, his salvation for you, his heaven for you. The only person that stops Jesus from getting to you is you. Do not be afraid. This was the greeting that the angel Gabriel gave to Zechariah and to Mary and to Joseph at that time. Fear not. When the angels appeared to the shepherds in the field, the shepherds were terrified until they heard the words, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. The same words are said to the women, First, by the angel. These women were shocked. They were surprised. They were dumbfounded. They were so scared and and anxious. Most of you would call us women like this hysterical. They were hysterical. They were because they were looking for their Lord Jesus' body. And so it says, the angel says, do not Be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. And the angel goes further to tell them to go ahead and tell the disciples he has risen from the dead. And with both great fear and joy, a mixture of emotions, they do as they are told. And so which do you think was greater, the fear or their joy? I would have to guess joy because nothing is more exciting than knowing that something good is going to happen. Something good is happening at that moment. Something exciting is happening. They may have had, uh, they may not have had the full of under, full understanding of what was happening at that moment, but they knew they, they, there was an, a feeling of excitement, of joy and fear all at the same time. They knew something good was happening. And normally when something good happens in our lives, we have this big sigh of relief and we have a great joy. And, and there's a bit of peace and calm that enfolds us. And then we say, thank you, Lord. It's about time. And God willing, when we are freed from this coronavirus and this time of lockdown and time of anxiety and fear, we too will be relieved. We will be relieved and sighing, saying, finally, thank you, Lord. And life will change. Life will be changed. And this was their time. It had arrived. Greetings. And so whatever the earthquake on Good Friday and the great earthquake on this Easter morning might have registered on the Richter scale, who can begin to measure the quake that this encounter with their Lord must have registered in their hearts? They had seen him crucified. They had seen him uh, uh, being placed in the tomb. And now when they look in this very same place where he was laying, they see him no more. And then he is standing right in front of them. And suddenly Jesus says, Greetings. Talk about great earthquake. This was the great earthquake. This is now the great heartquake. Can you feel it? 
that excitement, that warm, fuzzy feeling mixed with fear and anxiety and love and excitement all together. Greetings. And then Jesus says, do not be afraid. Wonderful words of grace and peace from the lips of him who is the fountain and source of all grace and peace. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. The aftershocks continue to be felt throughout the whole world. It began with these women back that day right down to our lives today. And lives continue to be shaken and even the hardest hearts are shattered. And the tremors of Good Friday and Easter Sunday will continue to shake this world until the last trumpet sounds. And then, when the dust settles, there will be a new heaven and a new earth, a home of righteousness. And so until then, you and I continue to live in a world that is crumbling, a world that is perhaps broken, a world that is experiencing earthquakes and tsunamis, destroying countless lives, and in the middle of the night without even warnings. We now have the coronavirus, and perhaps this is an earthquake shaking up the world and and also has the world on pause all at the same time. Governments around the world are being shaken. The economy non-existent. Even our personal lives and the lives of our families and loved ones are being shaken. It's being turned upside down. For various reasons, but mostly fear and anxiety at this time. Are we suddenly being buried by stones and rubble of life? It may have been also so before the coronavirus pandemic. But there are three points to take heart today. Three very important points. First, do not be afraid. Words from the angels and words from our Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid. The second is to allow Jesus to be the earthquake in your life. The experience a life of the earthquake. Not only an earthquake, but to experience a lifetime of heartquake. The third point Never cease to tell Jesus' story to the world, to those around you, your family, your loved ones, so that they will believe because you believe. Do not be afraid. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Trembles at his voice. I will break.